voting, voting all across the country today. Folks are going to the polls to cast their ballots uh, when it comes to a number of local as well as statewide campaigns here in Virginia. All eyes are on this state where Governor Terry McAuliffe uh, can only serve one term based upon the state constitution. Uh, of course, uh, Lieutenant Governor Ralph Northam, the Democratic nominee, is hoping to uh, fight off Ed Gillespie, a Republican uh, who has been running, uh, some say, a race-based campaign. Others say he has been hitting hard on typical Republican points. He has used the NFL protest uh, as well as illegal immigration as major points uh, when it comes to his campaign, also defending Confederate statues. He was once down by six points. According to some polls, he's up. Others show he is down two to three points. Also, Justin Fairfax, uh, he's looking to become the second African-American ever elected statewide in Virginia. He is running for lieutenant governor uh, against Republican Jill Vogel. We also, of course, have uh, statewide races in New Jersey happening today as well. Democrats Democrats want to take back the state house uh, from Republican Governor Chris Christie. Of course, his approval numbers are lower than Donald Trump. Trump's as a result of Bridgegate, and so that is going on there as well. And so uh, we'll see what happens there. In Atlanta, you have the mayoral election taking place there. Uh, could Mary Norwood become the first white mayor in Atlanta in 40 years? But Keisha Lance Bottom, she's blown up past her to lead the pack as well. Some 12 different candidates. There will no doubt be a runoff there. In Flint, Michigan, Karen Weaver uh, is facing a recall vote, facing a number of di different challenges. People are questioning her leadership in the wake of the Flint water crisis. You also have uh, local elections in uh, Minneapolis uh, for mayor, also in St. Paul, Minnesota as well, all across the country. Here's the most important thing, folks. If there's an election in your city happening today, you cannot be sitting at home. I don't care if it's raining. I don't care if the temperature has dropped. I don't care if it's too warm. You must access uh, your right to vote. And I always say, if you don't vote, don't complain. And if you don't vote, <laughs> shut the hell up. And so let's talk about this with our panel. We'll be talking soon with uh, Tom Perez, chair of the Democratic National Committee. Joining us right now, Sir Michael Singleton, political analyst, Republican political consultant of Singleton Strategies. Wendy Osefo, political analyst and professor of education, Johns Hopkins University. Faraji Muhammad, host of Listen Up, WEAA 88.9 FM in Baltimore. First off, uh, Wendy, what are you, are you looking for today? What, uh, what's on your mind in terms of these elections? What's on my mind is I want people to get out and vote. I think that we have seen the voting has consequences and it is consequential that we get out and vote. You cannot sit here and say that this is not going to impact you because it will impact you. And I think it's very clear, you know, for me looking at Virginia, I really need us to know that this is a high stakes election in Virginia. It's almost seen as a referendum against the Trump administration. Gillespie has done things with his ads that I think are highly questionable using black and brown individuals and using them as a face to say, do you want this individual to be your neighbor? So I really need the people in Virginia to hear this message and say you need to get out to vote and as Roland said if you are in any other state that has an election going on right now it is of uttermost importance that you're out there and if you are not voting and after you vote make sure you're encouraging your neighbors to come out and vote as well. Sure Michael? I mean look I, I think the two races that I'm going to be paying attention to in particular Virginia and Mary Norwood. Uh, Virginia because Ed Gillespie if you recall ran against Mark Warner uh, back in 2014 that was a very very close race uh, he's running against someone who is a lieutenant governor of the state uh, it has been under Democratic leadership I, I think the numbers are going to be very close uh, but I think more than likely at least from some of the polling I have seen the Democrat probably will win I think for Atlanta looking at Mary Norwood she would be the first white mayor in, in 40 years she's a Republican I'm, I'm interested to see if she's a Republican because she keeps saying she's an independent Mm. Well, I've known Mary Norwood for a very long time, and you probably know this, Roland. She is a Republican. <laughs> I, w I, I would like to see if the demographic changes in the city of Atlanta uh, play out and if a Democrat will, will win when there is a runoff or if uh, Mary Norwood will be able to corral some of those Republican voters in Buckhead and some of the other northern parts of the city to come out and vote for her. So those are the two races that I'm going to be paying attention to in particular.
particular. But as it relates to, to Virginia, I don't think it's a referendum on the Trump administration because, again, it it, I don't think it is. You have, you have a Democratic administration there. If the Democrats win, that's not a big surprise. Well, first of all, well, now here's a different Faraji. Uh, you have a Democratic governor now. The previous governor, Bob McDonald, was a Republican. So Virginia is not actually a blue state. No, it's Virginia a is a state. purple state. Purple state. I mean, it goes either way. Faraji, go ahead before I go to my next case. Real quick, I mean, I think this is the beginning. Camp today is a big day because it can be the beginning of the tide shifting um, in terms of, you know, you have these set of the elections in Maryland, in, in Maryland, you got the next set of elections in June. Mm -hmm. So they are, this, is, this could be a game changer. This can start the momentum, get the tide shifting from what we're seeing coming out of the Trump administration and just the Republican yeah, but control of Congress. So Democrats definitely, uh, desperately need some good news. Of course, they lost, they lost the uh, course special election down in Georgia. Uh, then, of course, uh, you, of course, uh, people are still reeling from elections. Uh, we a year ago uh, for the president. Joining us right now is Tom Perez. He is the chairman of the Democratic National Committee. Chairman Perez, welcome to News One Now. Well, and it's great to be with you and your listeners. Great to hear the excitement about people telling us to get out to vote because I couldn't agree more. Well, first and foremost, uh, obviously, uh, Democrats and progressives uh, are looking for wins. Uh, that's what it amounts to. Of course, you had close calls uh, in states uh, like Georgia. You have, of course, uh, a candidate down uh, in uh, Alabama running against Roy Moore. Polls show Roy Moore up 17 percent, even though some say he has uh, views outside of the mainstream there. You have the race in Virginia and in New Jersey, uh, your assessment of what today is looking mm -hmm. like for your party? Well, I feel good. I mean, you look at New Jersey, you got uh, Phil Murphy, who is a spectacular candidate, and we're poised to make history with our lieutenant governor candidate, Sheila Oliver. I spent time with her uh, about two weeks ago. She's dynamite. And uh, I think we're well poised to take that seat over. And again, this is these are 13-year elections uh, right now because of redistricting. So, uh, in, in Virginia, I, I, I um, was on the road for 700 miles over the weekend, crisscrossing the state, and the energy is palpable out there. I uh, spent Saturday with Justin Fairfax, the lieutenant governor nominee. We were uh, barnstorming parts of uh, Prince William and other counties in Virginia, and uh, you know the energy is palpable. And, and I think one of our key weapons we have going for us in Virginia, Roland, which is really important, is that there are 100 House of Delegates races uh, that are in play, all of them. In an ordinary cycle, we have about 40 to 45 Democrats running. In other words, we're, we're seating without any sort of uh, competition, uh, basically half the seats. This year, we have 88 candidates running, and, uh, and they're spectacular candidates. And, and the new DNC has been investing because our new mission is helping to elect Democrats up and down the ticket. And we've, we've done just that. We've, we have a, a number of really exciting uh, candidates of color who are running, and they're adding excitement uh, down ballot, and I think that helps everybody up and down the ballot. We're in the dog whistle phase of the campaign in Virginia. Ed Gillespie is a Donald Trump clone. Uh, you see these dark ads on television appealing to our darkest instincts. And, uh, you know, Ralph Northam is a healer. And uh, what Virginia and, frankly, America needs are healers who bring people together. And what we've been doing at the DNC is making sure that we are getting out in every single community. And that's why we've had, uh, you know, we've had organizers all over the state. Uh, we've, we've strategically placed them near uh, important uh, uh, locations like uh, Norfolk, Hampton Roads. Uh, we've hired people to help us make sure that uh, we get, we do really, really well in African American turnout. Uh, Scott Simpson did our direct mail. He's a uh, he's a pro. Uh, we hired a woman named Angela People to help make sure that we're doing African American outreach. And I was talking to uh, yesterday, uh, wife of an NAACP official who gotten a call telling him to go to the wrong polling place. So the silly tactics on the other side are starting, but. Uh, we've knocked on twice as many doors as Terry McAuliffe did four years ago. They're motivated, uh, they're organized. Chairman Perez, of course, uh, you have, uh, over the weekend, you get to deal with uh, the fallout from the excerpts of Donald Brazil's book, former interim DNC chair. A lot of Democrats have been on social media, other places, television and radio, upset, saying this was the worst timing. Uh, I've even had people saying that, well, if Ralph Northam loses in Virginia, they'll be blaming Donald Brazil. How have you had to... Uh, manage uh, all of that while you have these critical elections going on at the same time? I'll tell you, I've, I've, again, I, 700 miles I put on uh, our car in the last three days in Virginia, and I didn't have one 
single person, Rowan, asked me about Donna Brazil. Actually, there was one, and, and, the, and the only question she asked was, how'd she do it now? Uh, that's a question that my friend Donna will have to ask. I have great respect for her, but my singular focus right now, and, and the good news is that the singular focus of the voters uh, in Virginia and elsewhere is on electing Democrats, because this isn't simply about uh, making sure that people have access uh, to good jobs in Virginia. Terry McAuliffe has ushered in a, a great uh, economic uh, uh, growth period for Virginia. Unemployment is now 3.7 percent. We've got to make sure those jobs are available for everyone. We've got to build on programs like the cybersecurity program at, at Norfolk State and Virginia Union and elsewhere. We've got to make sure that everybody has access to opportunity. And the good news, again, Roland, is that's what people are talking about. They want, they want a leader fighting for their health care. They want a leader who's going to fight for good jobs for them. They want a leader who's going to fight for women's reproductive health. And Ed Gillespie's doing none of these. And, and if you watch what Donald Trump is doing this morning, he's, he's uh, attacking Ralph Northam, attacking uh, his service to our nation. This is the guy who got out of the Vietnam War saying he had flat feet or whatever he said, uh, attacking someone who served our nation. Uh, that's shameful, but that's Donald Trump, and that's Ed Gillespie. And uh, I don't know if you saw who endorsed him yesterday, but uh, Steve Bannon endorsed Ed Gillespie. Uh, we got to get out there, and I'm I'm so impressed with the organization. That's we spent oh we spent a million and a half dollars in Virginia. Zero percent was on television. One hundred percent was on building grassroots organizing and making sure we're talking to people we got to do a better job of that, and that's what we've been doing in 2017. You've got, of course, uh, a lot of folks uh, who are desperate for wins. So when we talk about uh, the focus on Donald Trump, these are statewide elections and local elections. And so are you making it clear to candidates they must be dealing with those very specific issues, such as jobs, economic development, health care, as opposed to making this a Trump referendum? Yeah, I mean, and again, in Virginia, you know, when we, we, we've talked a lot about job creation because people, people want to make sure they have a good job and a good future for themselves and their children. They want to make sure that education is, is accessible. I mean, you, you look at Ed Gillespie's support, Betsy DeVos, who knows absolutely nothing about the history of uh, HBCU. She, she uh, you know, wants to bring back uh, the world of yesterday where education is a privilege for a few and not a right for everyone. That's what voters are talking to me about. They want to make sure they continue to have their health care, and they're, they want to expand Medicaid in, in uh, Virginia. They understand that that would be really helpful for, for working families. They want to make sure that Pell Grants are, are continuing to be available. They want to make sure that we invest in all of our universities, including but not limited to our HBCUs. They want to make sure that those uh, remarkable programs that enable you to punch your ticket to the middle class at community colleges continue to be available. And, and Ed Gillespie is, is going to follow the Trump agenda and, and cut that. And, and Ralph Northam and Justin Fairfax, uh, they are all about moving Virginia forward, continuing that progress and bringing Virginia together, making sure we're united. Uh, people say to me, someone said to me yesterday, um, I want an America I can be proud of. Terry McAuliffe has given uh, Virginia a Virginia that they can be proud of. And, and uh, I'm confident Ralph Northam and Justin Fairfax and Mark Herring can do the same. And that's why uh, I feel uh, confident about this. You, you said something earlier that was spot on, though. It's, Virginia is a purple state. Uh, I mean, you look at how close Mark Warner's race was in 2014. You look at how close Terry McAuliffe's race was in 2013. So uh, that, that's the reality of Virginia. And that's why organizing matters. And that is why... The fact that we've been out there and, and, and been able to contact, uh, make, make twice as many contacts as Terry McAuliffe did, and he did a great job in 2013. Got it. More contacts than uh, Hillary Clinton did last year, and they had a very robust ground game uh, in Virginia. That's, that's the energy on the ground. You know, the indivisibles are working with us. We're right. working with all sorts of other groups, labor unions, et cetera. All but right. we've got to get people out to vote. Chairman Tom Perez, we appreciate it. Thanks a lot. 
Roland, it's always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you very much. Go back to our panel here. Again, if you look at Virginia, uh, Gillespie's hoping, hoping for significant white turnout uh, in the southern part of Virginia. Uh, of course, Ralph Northam, he's focusing on uh, northern Virginia. Uh, again, what you have for in the Democratic side, you also, they're hoping to take back uh, the state house in New Jersey. Uh, right now, if you look at what's happening, Republicans control 34 governor's mansions across the country, uh, 32 state legislatures. Winning these statewide uh, um, uh, races is critical to creating the momentum uh, going into 2018 midterm elections. I mean, look, we, we've talked about this on your show, Roland, last week, and I mentioned, I mean, over eight years of President Obama, Democrats have lost over 1,000 seats. When you look at fundraising numbers from the DNC, they are down significantly. They're losing a lot of money. There are a lot of operatives on the ground. I was just reading an article from the Washington Post that are worrying, will they have the funds next year to, to build the necessary infrastructure for voter contact, for voter mobilization? And, and they're not certain that they will. So, I mean, I think you look at states like Virginia, and, and sure, they, they likely will win, and that's a good thing. But I think when you look across the board, across the country, the Democratic Party is in major trouble. They well, don't have a message. They're not raising money, and that should be concerning people on the ground. Well, the issue to me, the issue to me when you talk about Democratic Party is, is what they need is they need wins. Right. Uh, the but Jordan. they have no wins. No, 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 what gives Democrats confidence, what increases fundraising, what gets people excited is when you win, not getting close. And what I'm saying is, today, what is going to be critical for Democrats is winning in Virginia, mm -hmm. winning in New Jersey, because mm -hmm. you need that. Winning creates momentum. Absolutely. I don't disagree with that. Yeah. I'm just not certain, Roland, if that winning will translate to what you're talking about, further increase in fundraising. No, no, no. Here's the deal. I, I, it won't be surprising it, if they win Virginia. Uh, no, 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 no. The question is, again, it's not surprising. This sort, this sort, this sort of like when, you, when, when, uh, uh, when you're watching a game. It don't matter if uh, you are pr projected to win by one point or ten points. Right. When you win, right. it yeah. creates momentum. We'll when, 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 you, when, when you win in sports, it yeah. creates a fan but base we'll that's more excited. Rolling no, no, no. The country sure, that has sure, to sure, sure, sure Michael. The country. Here's, win, here's what I'm saying. You build I on... get what you're no, no, saying, no, but that's no, one no, race. No, no, that doesn't no, correlate no, to the no, entire country. No, no. Yes, you build on the wins. Raji, go ahead. It's a game-changing race, and I mean, that's you're saying that's one race, but I'm saying the big scheme of... No, actually is. If Northern... Here's the deal. Here's the deal. If Northern... Them. Okay, no, no, let me Come explain on. this. If Northam loses in Virginia, that's devastating to Democrats. Yes. What Democrats are looking for Absolutely. is a win. That's I'm right. telling you. Yes. I don't care. If you got a sports yes. team, you yes. need a win. Absolutely. When you've been losing, you wrong. need a that win. That is not necessarily yeah, translate yeah, I mean, to success. So, so at this point, <laughs> you know, we could, if, if we can get Virginia, if, if, if Democrats get Virginia, New Jersey, and a couple other places, you, you, you're Momentum. making some headway. A couple other places, though. Where are those places? Again, let me say I'm this. Let me say this right now. You need wins in order to create momentum. Okay. If you lose, trust me, it makes it worse. We days on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. Hell no. no. That ain't gonna cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out, because you got a fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin. Weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.